Hi, for those of you who don't know me, my name is Sofia Lopez and I am a solar cell enthusiast. You can check all my work in the links in the descriptions, but for today, we're going to be talking about solar cell inefficiency. That's right, today we're going to be talking about the shockley kaiser limit or the detailed balance limit. So what are the basics? The shockley kaiser limit applies to solar cells that have a p-n junction, which you can read about here, but let's just dive right into it. The shockley kaiser limit comprises of three parts. The first is black body radiation, the second, spectrum losses, and the third, recombination. Let's break down that first one of black body radiation. Black body radiation is a fancy way of saying that solar panels just don't like heat. So a solar panel is made of layers, right? And in between these layers are atoms. And these atoms have different rings of electrons. So when a solar panel gets hot, the rings of the electrons come closer together. And this is kind of bad for making electricity. In a typical solar cell, the electrons can move from the valence band to the conduction band and make enough electricity between those two. But when it gets hot, the distance between these two actually shrinks leaving less room for the electron to move, and therefore less space for electricity to be made. Think of the solar cell like a tennis court. There's a lot of room between the players, so a lot of action can happen with that ball. But if when it gets hot, that tennis court would shrink, and people wouldn't be able to hit the ball as far. Quite a less interesting game, and in a solar cell, quite less efficiency. So black body radiation is when heat, aka radiation, stops electrons from going at their normal flow of electricity, creating a black body in the production of electricity. On to our second reason for inefficiency, spectrum losses. This spectrum is the electromagnetic spectrum, and solar panels can only eat a certain portion of this spectrum. Solar panels only use the sun's light that is in the visible light spectrum, which is from about 400 nanometers to 700 nanometers. That's not that much. On the other side of the spectrum, there's infrared rays and radio waves, which are much too big and moving at too low of a frequency to make any difference in the electrons of a solar cell. These waves don't have enough strength to knock the electrons out of the layers of silicon and create a field of electricity. And on the other side of the spectrum, you've got UV rays, gamma rays, and X-rays that are way too small to be making any difference on the solar panel. These just don't have the size to knock out those electrons and can't produce electricity. So all you've got le left is that visible light we talked about to begin with, and hence spectrum losses in that you can't use those radio waves or those gamma rays, but only that visible light. Our last and most difficult to comprehend reason is recombination. Recombination becomes down to the atomic level of a solar panel, where the silicon that's been doped isn't efficient in and of itself. After the silicon was doped, electrons were either added or removed, but in recombination, these are essentially locked. So where these extra electrons and fewer electrons were supposed to help make a field of electricity, they actually enforce the stopping of electricity. In atoms where recombination occurs, Photons just can't get in, and photons just can't move the electrons in order to make a current of electricity. As a result, these photons, or dull electrons, just become heat energy. So the shockley kaiser limit basically details the scientific reasons why a solar panel is stubborn. It doesn't like to produce electricity when its layers are too close together, black body radiation. It doesn't like to use anything but visible light spectrum losses, and it doesn't like to move sometimes, recombination. If you are super interested in solar panels and all their techie knowledge like I am, check out all the links in my description and the link to my portfolio. Thank you so much for watching and see you next time.